Okay. <laughs> Man. What an experience. Okay, guys. Damn, that big one scares me a bit, though. He wasn't at all aggressive, but... Man, those are big birds. <sighs> this made the trip worth it. Here's some information on the mute swan. It is native to Euro-Siberia, so that's the northern part of uh, Russia. And the name mute is interesting because it, uh, it doesn't indicate that the swan is completely mute in actuality, but that it uh, is less vocal than other swans. So for example, the goslings uh, are quite vocal, and um, the sound they make when they fly, for example, is it's quite noisy, as I've as I've uh, read, and um, it says that uh, the sound of the beating wings can be heard from up to two kilometers away, which is is pretty incredible. So there's some kind of communication happening there. Um, the closest relative of this species is the black swan of Australia, and it's a monotypic species, so there is no subspecies. So it's unique in that regard. Um, the history of it is interesting, evolutionarily speaking. Uh, the first recorded um, evidence of these, of this lineage, of this species of birds, is from Portugal and Italy, and Ireland, and France, from about 13,000 years before present day. So, um, I was kind of interested in that because, you know, I wondered why. Um, Maybe it's it's not that ancient of a species, or it's a it's a new subspecies of another um, extinct bird, or something like that. But it doesn't seem very old to me, or perhaps we simply haven't found the fossil evidence. Um, this is the second largest waterfowl species after the trumpeter swan, so it's a huge bird. And some of these uh, birds can actually weigh more than trumpeter swans, so uh, it's one of the heaviest flying birds. And the largest uh, cob or male um, mute swan weighed uh, about 51 pounds. That's 23 kilograms, and that's the largest weight ever recorded for a flying bird. Um, but they—I don't know if that bird could fly or not. I think there's a question as to whether that that could fly. That one specimen. Uh, yeah. So it's it's a large bird, and um, you know I wonder if there. Are, the sound of the wings that is made during flight is uh, part, partly the result of their their weight. Uh, so they're, when they mate, they're monogamous, and they both take responsibility for the goslings. And they're also strongly t territorial, so they can, they've been known to attack uh, canoeists and things. And there's a myth about them breaking uh, like a grown man's leg. But that's not been verified, so, yeah. Um, they're quite social, too. So, like, when they're um, in heavy breeding areas, there can be up to uh, 100 pairs of monogamous swan couples. And, yeah, they don't mind being in close proximity. So when they nest, they, I can't remember the exact statistic, but it's like a meter or two away, something like that, they can nest. And I know many other bird species are much more individualistic in how they, how they breed and how they behave. Um, you know, with the exception of such birds as penguins and things. But these these uh, mute swans, they're quite sociable, it seems. So, um, with their territorial nature, they have been known to be aggressive toward other birds in particular. Um, but in some areas, I think wild dogs and things have been known to predate them. When I saw them here at this location, it was interesting because they were so, you know, close to one another, and I was like, wow, I didn't know that they could be in such large gr large groups, you know. Yeah, so, um, let's see. They have an interesting custom, it seems. It, it, they've evolved a, a practice of flying in the morning together in, in a well-coordinated um, group, and... It's, uh, it's, I read this on Wikipedia, and they say it, it's solemn, 
which I thought was an interesting word. And then it goes on to say that the entire process from initial pre-flight assembly procession to takeoff, flight, and alighting could last for more than an hour. And it's been proposed, and there's a citation for this, it's been proposed that mute swans have evolved faith or religion and the mindset of wing worship. And I doubt it. <laughs> Personally, having studied anthropology, I don't think that's true. But I think that evolutionarily speaking, I think that the social interaction between these animals is essential. And I think they, they help each other and protect each other. And so I think that unity that occurs, you know, through the process of social interaction, such as flight, is uh, definitely unifying in its nature.